a lot of my videos nobody really asks for. But you actually did ask for this video because a lot of you enjoyed my recent videos on finding the worst leopard gecko owners I could, specifically on Reddit. And today we're in the corn snake arena. So I didn't think there'd be as much, but don't worry. I think we have plenty of content for you today. Uh, starting off with Noodle Hug. Two, two cute little corn snakes just cuddling, all coiled up in each other, just loving life. Yeah, reptiles are pretty solitary for the most part. There are some more social species of snakes, but most people don't really keep those and corn snakes are not really one of them. But the thing is, a museum near me that I grew up going to for years, they had tons of snakes there and they were all always separated and solitary, except for one enclosure with like five corn snakes, which growing up, I was like, oh, I guess corn snakes are a social species, but it seems like most people say that they're not, but I was just so used to seeing it at the museum. I've never kept them together. Uh, technically, I don't know as much about cohabiting them other animals, but there's three big patterns in the corn snake subreddit, one of which is cohabbing them and then everyone getting upset that they're being cohabbed. So if you were to ask me, I'd be like, yeah, don't, don't do that. Most of the time, it's most likely with most reptiles, they're gonna, one of them's gonna be injured, one or both of them's gonna be stressed out, one or both of them is gonna be dominant. I guess only one, only one can be dominant, but yeah, for the most part, it's, it's not epic. It's not as bad as like cohabbing king snakes, which would probably eat each other, but Still, not, not great, I don't think. Then again, I don't know as much about it, so let me know if you do in the comment section and maybe I'll even read it. Wow. <laughs> I hate squirrels now. I just saw a video on Facebook where a squirrel kept attacking this poor snake. It just kept biting the crap out of the snake and the snake kept trying to defend itself, but to no avail. This makes me so sad and I wish I could find that squirrel and blow its brains out. <laughs> With a post like this, I was certain that this would be an interesting account and I'm sure it was, but it was suspended. Uh, he actually posted a lot on this sub and there's some some weird weird posts. I thought this one was worth sharing. So thank you for looking at it with me. Much appreciated. So I caught a small fluffy caterpillar a few months ago and put it with my snake. I threw a ton of random insects in there. I never had expected it to become an actually cool looking moth. It's really red and orange under the wings. I'll admit it's it's a cool looking moth. Also I've never heard of someone purposefully voluntarily putting bugs, foreign random bugs, in their corn snake enclosure or any reptile enclosure for that matter. <laughs> the comments said, you might end up with a sick or dead snake if you throw wild insects in there. You never know what bacteria or parasites they could be carrying. Uh, you ever heard of a bioactive setup mate? <laughs> the whole point is to let insects and beneficial bacteria build up and become a self-cleaning environment, which is true. But I, I think bioactive enclosures are cool. I actually used to sell like supplies and stuff for them, including the insects like springtails and isopods, but I sold out and just never bred anymore. Maybe I will again at some point, but the nice thing about those is they are bred in captivity and you can be pretty certain that they are parasite and bacteria free. So I would say it's not as big of a risk with corn snakes because they're not going to be eating them. But then again, why? Just if you want some bugs in there, just get some isopods. They're, they're equally as cool, I think. Arnold has no grip on our bedspread. <laughs> Okay, I think that's actually kind of funny. <laughs> I mean, it's such a foreign surface. Like when would a corn snake ever actually like in the wild have a totally smooth surface? I don't think it ever would, but I I'm very curious what it would feel like. It probably feels like walking on water or something. I'm like, what is going on? I also don't think people realize how fast corn snakes can be. Cause like when they're tiny, they can slip away. It can be kind of scary. They'll be so calm and then they just suddenly do this. And you're like, oh God, what's going on? <laughs> New tattoo I got for my corn snake, Jeffrey. I shouldn't laugh, we're moving on. New snake. Uh, as you all know, our butterscotch passed away this morning. Well, that just took a depressing turn. Would it be insensitive and heartless to go out and buy another snake right away? I'm kind of on the fence about it. I, I think this is interesting. I think it happens with any pet, probably most often with dogs. You have a dog, it dies, and you instantly go out and get a new puppy, puppy or something and you feel like you're replacing it. I've thought about it a bit and I, I don't think that you're really replacing the animal. I think some people probably do the unhealthy idea of trying to replace them and having the same animal, but I'd say for the most part, most people just overthink it. And even with the reptiles, if, if one dies or something, as long as you have an idea of like, well, it's not something I straight up just <laughs> neglected and I'm and the other one's gonna be okay, I think it's fine. So I don't think you should feel guilty if you have an animal die and then you instantly get another. Because if you want to own or keep corn snakes in this instance, just because one dies for a certain reason doesn't mean that you can't get another, like, hover soon. But also, it might not be a bad idea to sit with the idea for a bit, but I think most people can pretty much instinctually tell if they're doing it for a good reason. But before it gets worse, 
I wanna tell you about Surfshark, the sponsor of this video. If you're using the internet, which I kinda of suspect you are, you should make sure you're safe while doing it. Surfshark is a virtual private network that secures your data with industry leading measures by using uncrackable encryption and the most secure protocols. It won't protect you from criticism on your Reddit posts, but it will keep your IP and DNS completely invisible when using the internet. Although it can sound kind of confusing, it's really easy to use, and one Surfshark subscription lets you install and run on an unlimited number of devices. But it's not just about security. Surfshark also unlocks the 15 largest Netflix country libraries from the United States to Japan. It keeps you safe on public Wi-Fi. You can also avoid location-based price discrimination, and a lot more, because you can just change whatever country it looks like you're in. So if you're interested, you can unlock the best price on the market with code GOHERPING on the link below. That gets you 83% off and four free months to Surfshark. So thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. I've been using it all year and I really enjoy it. And now back to my favorite website. <laughs> Snowflake teasing Misha last night. <laughs> this is just one of those posts where I'm like, you see this happening? All right, maybe you let Snowflake play with your snake, but even if you do, why would you take a picture and post it on Reddit? You should at least be able to tell that people aren't gonna like it. So I'm just saying, but you do you, Snowflake and Misha. <laughs> uh, my poor baby. I'm so sorry about your regurgitation this morning. I thought you were still hungry. I hope you recover from this, my sweet boy. And I promise it won't ever happen again. It's so sad. Wait, this is the same person as the, 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 the suspended one. I, I didn't even realize I was the same one. This is surprisingly common, especially people that have only kept domestic animals. They feed their dog. Their dog, actually, I don't know if dogs know when to stop eating. They feed their cat, their cat stops eating because some people free feed their cats and whatever, obviously they can get fat and stuff. But a lot of people think, oh, my corn snake, it's moving around. It's, it's doing all these signs as if it's hungry. So I feed it, but oh wait, it's still doing it. It's still looking. So I feed it again and wait, but it's still, it's still active. I guess I should just give it another one. And then it vomits everywhere. <laughs> I think what they're doing is normally if a corn snake is like, oh, mouse, I eat mouse. Mouse is gone, but wait, mouse, probably around more mouse. So it looks for the other mice. And also they're very opportunistic because obviously a lot of snakes can go a very long time without eating. And that's, I mean, also because they might go a long time without finding food. So if they find a group of five mice, they're probably gonna try and eat them and risk the regurgitation, but. Yeah, they can definitely overeat. So if, if a snake regurgitates once and someone like asks me, which I try not to give advice on this kind of thing because then people expect me to give them more advice on saving their animals that probably need medical attention. But generally my rule of thumb is if it regurgitates or vomits once, I monitor it, I don't freak out, I don't bring it to a vet immediately, but if it does it again, like the next week or the next feeding, then it's probably something else. So a lot of times it's just stress or overfeeding or something, but other times it can be a medical thing. So that's my thing if it if it happens once. And that's like the number two of the three themes on the corn snake sub. The first was the cohabbing and the second was regurgitation. I've never seen so many regurgitation pictures in one sub and I'm doing you an honor by not showing it. Also, I'll, uh, <laughs> I think I have it pulled up. I, I posted two of these, like I said. The first one had a literal bullet hole in the gecko in the thumbnail and nobody cared. Nobody really seemed to mind that I showed them that, but I just posted this one with a prolapse and everyone freaked out and they're all upset at me for not showing that. And, and there was a warning in the video of like, this is about to be gross for something else. That's because Justin edits them, yeah, most of these videos. And Justin is the middleman who can save you from things that I wanna show you, but he doesn't think you should see without a warning. But the thumbnails are all me. I can shake whatever I want, anyway. I'm, I'm doing you a favor this time. And also, I don't know why more people are grossed out by just a somewhat common and not that gross of a medical thing versus a literal bullet hole in a gecko. That's my rant. Thank you for listening. Where were we? <laughs> Sp speaking of, <laughs> I forgot about this one. Weird black scale build up on belly. Should I take it to the vet? Um, <laughs> what is that? I feel like I've seen a lot of weird reptile things, but I do not know what that is. It's such a weird little confined area. At first I was like, maybe it had stuck shed building up, but that cannot be stuck shed. Well, I guess we gotta go to the commas to investigate. I take it to the vet. I'm not sure how it even got that bad. It looks like an infection or scale rot. That does not look like scale rot to me. I feel like scale rot, it would kind of, I hate this word, but I'm gonna say it, slough off before it gets to this point. Maybe not though, that's just a guess. I had something similar once. I got a new hatchling. She had a genetic defect and wasn't able to digest food. I found out after going to the vet because she threw up a lot and wasn't growing. She shed once in her six month life. At, towards the end, she started looking like this. It was caused by the mice she tried to digest rotting inside of her. 
I learned something new every day, I guess. Hopefully it's okay, I guess. Also, a lot of people, the uh, the bullet hole gecko apparently is okay, according to the recent posts on the account, so that's good. PetSmart Rescue, look at me, I'm such a good person. I give PetSmart money for an animal that they wanted me to buy anyway, and now they'll replace it with another animal. And I, but it, it just, I saw it and it was so cute and it was just saying, save me, please. I hate this place. And then I, I went and I gave them the money and PetSmart was like, okay, cool. We just made another $50 from snakes. I guess we should breed and sell more snakes and you're not rescuing the animals, please stop. No, I can't stop you from buying from PetSmart. It's 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 all legal. It's your money. It's your future snake that's probably gonna die prematurely. But I'm just saying, if you're asking me, and I'm gonna pretend like you are, just stop. There's so many other places. You don't even have to buy it from me. I don't care. Although I do think there's one for sale at armlessgales.com, but you can buy from Morph Market. There's other online sites. If you wanna feel that feeling of rescuing one, you can go, I don't know, to Craigslist. Just, you're not right. You just bought a corn snake and you just did what PetSmart wants you to do. I'm just saying. I didn't mean a rant. How many rants have I had in this video? Moving on. <laughs> okay, this one's gonna take me a minute to read. Help, mine a corn snake has now mouse head. Should I take her to get? <laughs> Every time I butcher reading something, this is what it looks like in my head. But I'm pretty sure I read that correctly. I, I, I'm guessing English just isn't their first language. <laughs> I like the comments too. I don't understand the question. Doesn't it look for you like my snake has mouse's head? I don't know, but for me it does. Your snake is just coiling around the snake. <laughs> what? Your snake is... <laughs> I'm going... Okay, I... I guess this is a joke, and I'm going to ruin the joke by trying to explain it to myself. So they are feeding life for some reason, whatever. They're feeding the snake, the mouse head sticking out. It looks like the snake has a mouse head, but then the person thought it was a real question. And then they said the snake is coiling around this. I'm so confused. However, this does show the third of three patterns in this sub, one of which was the cohabbing, the second was the regurgitation, and the third is for some reason there's way more live feedings in our corn snakes than anything else. I think I've done a few videos on live feeding. Ultimately, it's like, why bother? It's more expensive, it's worse for the mouse that's not beneficial to the snake. It's more risky. Like there's not really any pros to the live side, but it's very common in this sub. And I think especially if you feed like a day old pinky, it, a pinky literally can't do anything. It's just gonna scream at most. I don't even know if it can scream at that age. Imagine getting eaten before you can even scream. But yeah, that's, that's that. I made this a while ago. This is a 3D model of my pet corn snake. Let me know what you think. Uh, it looks better than the tattoo. What can I say? A picture of puppies, colors, and patterns. Uh, any morph ideas? And he's eating while being handled. Snakes have a lot of variety when it comes to their personality. Cause I mean, they are different animals. Even if they don't necessarily have as much personality as a person or a dog or something. I think it, there is a surprising amount of difference between them. And some snakes freak out, like you give them a, a prey, like you feed it a mouse, and it's like you just look at it the wrong way and it regurgitates it. And this is because it's it's uh, anxious, basically, and kind of stressed out because while it's eating, it can't defend itself, and so it would rather defend itself than eat a meal. So if you like pick it up or startle it or move it, it might regurgitate that food so it can defend itself. But then other ones are actually okay with being handled while being fed. The most I've done is I've fed a snake and it like starts falling out of the enclosure and I just like on, on the front opening ones and I have to put it back in uh, or sometimes I have to move it because it's in the way of something but that's the, like the most and but for some reason some people just hold them while they eat which is not something I would recommend but then again some of them are okay I just don't really get it I'm just confused okay reddit confuses me what can I say and finally a picture of Bucky the scale is corn so if you didn't know some breeders like to breed snakes without their scales. The way I see it, which this is obvious, it's such a new thing that there's a lot of different opinions. It's like with plastic surgery. I think plastic surgery is not good or bad necessarily. And it's like, oh, you got a little Botox, you got a little nose job, just some little tweaks to make it oh, you yourself feel a little better or look a little nicer. And then all of a sudden you just turn into that like plastic Barbie Ken human male guy that gets like artificial muscles implanted and stretches their skin back so far it looks like it's about to rip off. That's how I kind of feel about breeding the scaleless animals, okay? You start, you find these couple natural variations and mutations and they look pretty and you breed them and you make a blue-eyed leucistic and a pastel ball python, just all these kind of neat things. And then, oh wait, it turns out we can make them without the scales. We can just remove part of its body and it looks cool and people buy it for a lot of money. So now I'm gonna do that. And then they do it with the ball pythons. Oh, the head of my ball python doesn't have any scales. And then, oh wait, now the whole body of my ball python doesn't have any scales. <sighs> So I think the scaleless Texas rat snake is probably one that seems to be totally fine without scales. And then the ball python is probably the more extreme one of less fine without its 
scales. And so most people kind of acknowledge and accept that the scale with rat stinks are okay, but why? It's so weird. Why would you take it to such an extreme? I, I don't like it. That's just my opinion. I'm not trying to convince you that I'm right, even if I am. And then the corn snakes, they're one of the newer ones of the whole scale thing, but I think, I think we can take some things too far. And I think that it's happening. I think that a normal corn snake with scales is, is nice and pretty. Sure, it, they, they're super cheap. If you're trying to make money, yeah, you're not going to make as much from a normal scaled corn snake from a scale list. But that's another thing is I think reptile prices are just too low. Yeah, it's kind of like a race to the bottom of like, I'd say the biggest race to the bottom I've seen in like modern commerce <laughs> is probably art commissions. People will take commissions for like a dollar for the most intricate, beautiful digital art. And oftentimes it's people in like foreign countries and stuff who that money is a lot more to them than it would be to someone like in the United States. And that race to the bottom just kind of hurts everyone because everyone gets paid less and everyone expects lower prices. And I think that's kind of happening in the reptile community where you can buy a normal ball python for like 20 or 30 bucks. That's so little money for like a living animal. And they're not exactly cheap to own. You can't just throw it in a warehouse and have it sit there until it sells and then you ship it. You have to actually care for it and put all these resources in. So what I'm trying to say is reptiles are too cheap. <laughs> oh, of course you'd say that. You're the, the, you're the reptile seller. Well, yeah. I'm the, I am, I do sell them and I think they're too cheap. That doesn't change my opinion. I just accidentally ranted a lot in this video, but hopefully you enjoyed. Speaking of selling things, I think as of recording this or not as a recording, but as of posting, there's new merchandise available. Maybe. If there is or isn't, you can just go to goherbing.com and find out. If there's merchandise there, then hey, it is. If there isn't, then it'll be coming soon. But uh, I'm excited about it, and it's been a good little while in the making of this new type of merchandise. So hopefully it goes well. That's the corn snake owners I found on Reddit. If you want me to do more, I can. Uh, I can explore some other, some other types. But that'll be it for this video. I'm Alex. Thanks for watching.